Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Go to Jail with Clay County Historical and Arts Council. Today we are in the Pioneer Kitchen with Ms. Sarah Smith. Sarah, thank you so much for telling us about this. I'm glad to be here and to do another episode on the museum. Uh, let's start with how this room even came about. Well, I wasn't in the area when they decided to add this. However, this part used to always be a back porch in the original jail oh, okay. or the a residence for the jail. And so I guess it made the logical place for them to be able to add another room to the museum. And I understand that this was built in 92. Uh, yes. And um, the funding for that was provided by who? By the Moss Grant. Uh, they have always been very generous to the museum. The Moss Foundation is connected with our Moss Library here in downtown Hayesville. Um, and later on, was there a dedication? Well, it was dedicated to Gertrude Price, who was the founder of the Clay County Historical and Arts Council, and quite a, had quite a bit to do with uh, getting this building, which was the old jail, to be used as a center for the uh, arts and historical council. I don't know that at the beginning, according to the minutes, that they really intended to use it just as a museum. They called it uh, Center for the Arts, and they had their meetings here. They did uh, have a lot of historical displays. Uh, many of them at the beginning were uh, just for a short period of time, and then they would do something else. But uh, I'm not sure in the meantime just when they decided that this would be a kitchen and when they would dedicate it to uh, Gertrude Price. But Gertrude is also a re relative of yours, correct? Uh, Gertrude is my aunt. Your aunt. And so she always engaged her in-laws, uh, my uncle who was from here, and nieces and nephews to work in the museum. And, but of course, when, by the time I moved back, she had passed away. Oh. But it was only natural that I uh, come be a, be, a, be a part of the museum. Yeah. And since then, I always have um, had a great interest in the museum. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the tableware where we're sitting now. Um, we are gonna go as a tour around the room and give you a little more detail on each uh, items and you know, the uses and, and things that, that were done back in pre-electric times. So this was, uh, when did electricity come to Clay County? Well, in about 1945 was when most of the county got electricity, though I understand that the, t the town and some areas maybe had electricity a little before then. It was rumored that there would be a dam in 1941, but by, the middle of 1942, it had been completed. Uh, the main purpose of it then was to uh, furnish, help furnish electricity for the Alcoa plant in Tennessee that was making uh, aluminum for the war. By 1945, they had established the Rural Electric Corporation, which meant that they had been able to string electric wires out into the communities and have electricity I'm assuming through most of the county. So up until then, even though this is our pioneer kitchen, and I think of pioneers as being back in the 17 and 1800s, right. but this is pretty much what the kitchen would have looked like in most of Clay County up until they had electricity in 1945, because we did do everything by lamplight. Um, whether it was eating around the table, reading a book, studying or whatever, we had to use lamplight. And the oil that went in there, was that something that they had to purchase or did that something they could make at their own home? I mean, what did they use? Well, we used kerosene oil, which was purchased. Okay. And I would assume that that's what most people use. Kerosene, all right. And then um, just looking at this silverware, like a three times fork, and the detail is gone in here. I'm not sure if this is bone or um, ivory or antler. 
I'm not sure, uh, but in doing research on it, I couldn't tell. I thought maybe it was ivory, though it looks like it could also could be bone. Um, but it, it is a three-pronged fork, and these were the, uh, the silverware and the, also what's in the case over there. What's this uh, made of? The metal part? Well, I'm not sure. Imagine they would have to keep sharpening it to get an mm -hmm. edge on it. But it's uh, it's very I old, very neat. Understand? Uh, came along about the Civil War era. Civil War. Okay. Well, it was the best that I could find the Civil War era. Uh, and I've noticed we've got some beautiful china in here. I'm not sure how old these are, but well, I doubt that the actual uh, plates and cups are very old. A few of them were here when I got here, just an odd inch or two. I see. But so it says made in England. Uh, I noticed in watching old TV shows mm -hmm. that the blue willow seemed to be what they were using, and so I thought, well, you know. That's about the I old. see, willow wear uh, of royal china. Since we could not come up with the tin plates and things, uh, that blue willow or something close to blue willow was the, uh, the closest we could get to be a, being able to set this so up. So this was the most popular china at the time? Well, if, if Little House on the Prairie and some of those shows are correct, <laughs> Right, I then, I, then uh, I would see them using what looked like to be blue willow. This is definitely from Japan. Uh, so yeah, pretty. so these are not. I mean, these are very. These are just odds and ends. Uh, just kind of pieced together. Pieced together to try to give the effect. Well, you've done a great job. They they all pretty much match. All right. Well, um, is there anything else you want to tell us about before we actually start and make our way around the room? Well, uh, maybe just bringing up a little bit about life in the times. Yeah. Uh, my mother always said it wasn't the good old days because they were very hard days. Right. Uh, because the women's life revolved around making a garden, which meant then she had to uh, cook the food, can the food for the winter, put that up. And uh, use some of the things that we will see later, which made it much more difficult than doing with electricity. Uh, while the, uh, people, the men around here would have been working out in the fields farming most of the time because that was the main thing that would have gone on then. Uh, around the room in here on the walls and in uh, several other areas of the museum. Uh, you will see what we call our Gideon Laney collection of photographs. I think I mentioned maybe in the other uh, interview that I did on the feed sacks that his pictures depict life in the 30s and 40s and some probably even before that. But he doesn't just have posed pictures. He had an eye for uh, showing people as they were with what they were doing, Just their actually, personalities. Actually doing chores life. or whatever mm -hmm. daily life entailed. Life at that time. Right. And uh, <clears throat> we have a large collection of these pictures. Many of them are up in this room and in other rooms down here and then upstairs in the cell area. There's a bookcase that has them. And we have this booklet that we keep usually on the corner of the table in the kitchen because all of the pictures are numbered and there's a corresponding picture in this right. notebook that will tell what the picture is about. And if we have been able to identify the people in that picture, then that would be It'll key. Who. And like for example, this number 41, what does it say about him, this little guy? Let's see. Uh, 
the Blanchard child, that would have been his last name, Blanchard, with tricycle and a toy rifle. He, so, he, he, he uh, definitely has the right They, they didn't know give his last name. Right. A lot of people, they don't know who they are. I see. And, and after the, they got the collection, they did work for a while on getting names and were able to place names with a lot of pictures. And people would come in sometimes and recognize somebody. And then their someone. family or friends mm -hmm. or something. And so uh, that name would be recorded. So if you come to the Pioneer Kitchen here at the museum and you notice that someone on the wall that we wanted to get in Lainey Photography, double check our book and for sure if we don't have that name, please let us know. We're always willing to update our records. What, and what else, Miss Sarah? Well, uh, I think that's about it until we go around the room okay. and, and we talk about and Cherry and, and what uh, part of the early life that would have been. Okay, well let's break here then and we'll see you in a minute when we go through each one, each of our exhibits. Thanks. Okay, this is a, a wooden ironing board, uh, one of the earliest ironing boards that was used. And before electricity, uh, well actually they did have some gas irons before electricity, but these are the old cast iron irons and they would have al always had at least two irons so that they could, if they're ironing with one, they would have another one on the stove A back up getting hot when, I see. because these didn't stay hot too long. Okay. And to tell whether or not they were hot enough, they would lick the finger, touch it, and if it sizzled, <laughs> It was hot enough to iron, and they didn't want to burn their finger in the process. Sure. Let's look behind you. You said uh, there's an actual photo of Gideon here? Yes, this is Gideon Laney and his daughter Grace. So this is who took all these photos yes. of day daily life in Clay County. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Laney. They were actually found after his death by his family, and they donated them to the museum. All right, there's a few things back here. Um, this is a sausage mill. Do we know anything about where that came from? Or just all these items were just donated? They were just donated by different people. That's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> many people in the area used to raise tobacco, and they will recognize that as a tobacco basket and the tobacco sticks. So they would lay, after they cut it, they would lay it on this basket to carry it? Yes. When they're doing it by hand? This is before mm -hmm. machinery, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow. And then probably used that basket when they took it to market, I think. Okay. But I'm not sure about that. Uh, I might be wrong. This was a collection down here. Of, of shoe last, and uh, those are different sizes for the different size shoes that could be made. You see, it's, uh, so they some use this as a as a, a pattern that used it. They uh, put the shoe, the leather on there, and worked around that. that so it's got the arch in the foot. Mm -hmm. I see, amazing. And uh, put a little tacks in the to hold the top of the shoe onto the sole. Wow. And then you've got your different sizes. Look at that little tiny foot. <laughs> Some great big foot. So you could get these from Sears and Roebuck. That, mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's talk about this lady here. Who looks okay. like our... Well, she's in the process of oh, making some soup. Uh, all of these are cast iron pans and things. Uh, some of these are just uh, generic things, a, a frying pan, and of course then a, a larger pot to be used to make stew or soup. You of course had to have the tea kettle that would always uh, sit on the stove with hot water in it. I'm Pretty sure. much always, yeah. Uh, now 
these are a little bit more, a little bit different. Uh, this was a meat grill. Oh, nice. I, I don't think many people could have owned a, a meat grill, but you can see that they can put the meat in there. And then close and it and it, flip mm -hmm. it. And it, it has a date on it, which I'm sure is the patent date of 1867. Oh, wow. And, and this, I think, is very interesting. It is a waffle iron, which also would be used on the old oh, nice. iron cook stove. Very much the same. And then uh, it turns, let's see. I was thinking you could turn this part over. Right. So up and, and twist. Turn it over. Oh, and then cook, nice. Then cook the bottom part. Awesome. Man, that sure were smart. Work with that later. What do we know about this wood burning stove? Well, I'm not sure who would have donated this, but it is a it's a very nice wood stove, a little bit smaller probably than some that I remember being in kitchens. Yeah, depending uh, on the house size of the family, you mm, might need a bigger one. Right, but it's a good size for this kitchen because it leaves room. But, but this is the area where the, the fire was built. Looks like the wood was put in there. And uh, I think that you would have taken the ashes out here. Right. And then, of course, the oven. Very cool. What is this? Some kind of enamel? Tin? That, that looks like metal. Mm -hmm. Metal? Yeah. And of course, it looks like a butter churn over here. A churn, jugs. of course, always. Uh, every family would have churned their own butter. And, and they churned it. This could, well, there's a dash in there that came up and down, and you had to right. keep doing that. And I remember my grandmother, great grandmother, always, always sitting by the the fireplace, churning, and I have her churn. You do. That's yes. wonderful. Great memories. And now these jugs would have been for what? Milk or uh, water or uh, spirits? Whatever anyone needed to use them for, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Really, I'm not familiar enough to know if they actually would have kept milk in them. They would have had a spring house or some place to keep the milk and butter cool. Right. And preserve it. Okay. Uh, and All right, let's talk about this stuff here on the wall. This colored glass and what is on the top shelf. Let's start at the top okay. shelf. Okay. Uh, that's just a collection of granite ware, which was used in the 1800s to the early 1900s. It's a metal with uh, glazed with the blue and white. There are some different colors, uh, brown and yellow and others, but this is one of the most common ones that would be used at that time. Was the blue swirl wear. Fancy. All right, and now we've got some canning jars. These are canning jars, and if you notice, they have glass tops on them. Right. And they were called lightning jars because if I hopefully I can demonstrate with this one well this is you could put the lid on it and then you could seal it like lightning so it was really fast yeah it I was see fast. Nice. So they, they call them lightning jars pretty color Yes, they're very colorful and, and they are uh, collectible. At last, they, they have different Easy dates seal. on them that would be uh, the, the patent dates. And Atlas, Easy Seal. And then there's a ball, the rest of the balls, two mm -hmm. Atlas. Very cool. All right, mm -hmm. and then this green glass oil lamp, that's beautiful. Look at that. That was given to us by uh, two ladies that used to come and visit the museum about once a year. I think both of them have since passed on. 
but they wanted to do uh, donate it in memory of their father. <clears throat> Explain this invalid's cup here. Well, you can see the has a spout on it that could be turned up for a person to drink out of. Uh, and, without and it's partially covered. Mm -hmm. Right, I see. I've also seen cups similar to that or maybe like that called mustache cups. Hmm. I to keep their mustache out of it? They, they nice. could drink out of it without getting... <laughs> milk or whatever they were drinking on their mustache. Now this gets me excited here because this looks like a bunch of cookie cutters. Yes, and they were donated by a friend of mine that has donated several things in the kitchen. And she donated the cake pan, uh, which uh, Is this one that has a center or what is it? The band comes out or no, is it all solid? I I think so. Hmm. It's not like a what do they call a spring? It, something? No, it doesn't. The center doesn't come out, but um, but it's like for a bunk cake. Mm -hmm. For this, uh, and, and it does have um, the name of the company on the side. But not a year. I was thinking that I had seen a, a year on it. Maybe I just she may have had that information for and, you. And yeah. Found the year. Uh, and, and Look, there, diamond are, stars, and, yeah. looks like a lion. I don't know what that guy little, is. I guess he could Bear. be however he wanted to do Pigs and cows and dogs and <laughs> so cute. I bet you they had made some yummy cookies. All right, let's keep moving around here. This is a painting on the wall here uh, by the doorway that says Mission Hill, Grist Mill, and Shooting Creek. Owned and run by Jack Henry. So that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm. We don't know who painted this. Let's see. I'm not sure what that says. No, I, I don't know. MJ, somebody. Someone uh, brought it to the museum, I think, and gave it to Molly one day, and she might Hung it right remember up. who that was. All right. And then what do we have here? All right. This is a corn <laughs> shell, and it actually does not belong in the kitchen. It would, would belong in a corn crib. Right. Okay. But it was here, and there was no other place for it, and so we just left it. But uh, people. So that basically, the cob goes in here. The, yes, the, the ear of corn with the before it has been shelled goes in there, and you turn the crank, and, and this wheel turns. Now, this is a kind of a fancy one because not all of them had wheels and things to turn. But then it would have a sack at the bottom it, to catch mm -hmm. all the corn. Uh, yes. And then a place the, the where the cob comes out. That would come out, and uh, then you would have the, the your shelled corn things. to feed the, probably feed your chickens. Mm hmm Pretty ingenious. And this is called a keystone. Keystone. Corn sheller. And this says circa 1880 to 1910. So, we've got some old stuff in here. Let me point out this. Okay. Uh, we do try to have things in our museum that either are from Clay County. What or, in the world is that? Or they are things that could be used in Clay County. Right. Uh, but as I understand from Molly, we had uh, some people visiting the museum. I think they were from California. I might be wrong. But anyway, they told her that they had an antique vacuum cleaner. And they mailed it back to us. And That's even awesome. Though I don't know if anyone in Clay County had a vacuum cleaner like this. But so you happened. just put the little hole on the whatever's on the floor and I, then pull up on the... I guess. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. Maybe wow. you picked up certain things you may have spilled on the floor. I don't think you could vacuum the whole floor with it. Right. But, but Talk it about wearing your arm out. <laughs> mm -hmm. It wow. is interesting. So uh, we have left it in the kitchen for people to see. <sighs> That's amazing. And this has got a patent in 1911. Wow. 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's go moving around the room here. More of uh, Mr. Laney's photography. Yes. And look yeah. at this old high chair. How cute. <laughs> so little. All right, we've got another collection over here. And these are candle holders, and they are definitely old, antique. Wow. Um, Huh. They're not very heavy. I expected no. them to be heavy. Mm -mm. No. These look like those glass pieces that goes at, uh, like on the linemen or something. Right. Use, they, right. They are. And this is just a collection of different kinds and different colors. Very cool. Um, and just a collection of old uh, medicine bottles or things. Uh, this one uh, does have the name on it of what it was for. Is there any kind of date or no? Ten percent alcohol. Oh, it's got prepared for who? So they made this right on the spot for yeah. whoever needed it, huh? It's, I think so. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then is this the same as the? This is just more of the. Old. Oh, these have the actual wire on there. That has that has old wire on it. Interesting. All right. Well, let's go here to the rest of our cutlery. All right. That we so, started talking about. Mm -hmm. This is another collection uh, given by the same person that gave this silverware and the other things over there. Um, and this is just a little more of it, and uh, it's in a little nicer shape. And the only, we couldn't find anything definite about it except that it was from the Civil War era. Notice that the forks have more prongs. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, they're four they prongs. They have four prongs. And it almost looks like there are prongs. crosses on them. Mm hmm. Very neat. All right, well, let's talk about this. Uh, this family and their quilt. Henry and Maddie Henland. Let me back up a little so I can get a better wider view here. And their family donated that and it was very special because it uh, did have their name embroidered on it, which we don't find very often. I think that a crazy quilt, I think that's what that is called. A crazy quilt? <laughs> because it just has the different shapes Cut out. Oh, right. I see. It's uh, not So it's not all uniform shapes. No. But look at all that hand stitching. And I'm sure that that's clothing that they had uh, outgrown or that was worn out and they took the good parts out and cut out pieces to make a quilt. Mm -hmm. Take an awful lot of work. But look at that bird. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We're welcome our museum docent Molly in here to tell you a little bit more about this Penland quilt. Okay, um, this quilt was given to us by a local family and I had some people come in and they told me that Henry and Maddie, who you see in the picture up here, lost everything in a fire. And so their friends and family and the members of their church made this quilt for them back in 1909. Very interesting. I didn't see the date until I, you said that. I didn't either. I thought the date was on it somewhere, but I couldn't yeah. find it. I see it now. Yeah. Made year 1909. Mm -hmm. And that's why they put their name on it, because yeah. it was a special gift being made yeah, it was for a special them. I see. For them. Well, thank you for that, Molly. This is just an old cabinet that was donated. I'm not sure of the age of it at all. I have no idea. But the interesting things are the things that are inside it. 
we mentioned how making butter was so important. Let me show you the butter churn. Uh, this is a butter mold where they would mold the butter in there. They would have this in it. If I can get it back, I realize they would mold it in there. Oh, I see. And then use a stick to push it push out. Push it out. Okay. And, and then and put in the butter dish. Usually, from the molds that I have seen, this top part had a design on it. Oh, right. And then it made a design. So it'll be pretty. The butter. Yes. And similar to that are the butter paddles. If they just padded it out themselves, then they could make a, a design. This is a simple design, um, just with a line Have to grooves, go across. Yeah. They might be creative about it and make diagonals or use both of them. What is that? This is a potato ricer with the potatoes in there. An easy way to make mashed potatoes, I guess. Why did they call it a ricer? What does that mean? Um, maybe when the potato comes out, out those it's holes. similar to, I see. to rice. That's funny. And then it said 1920 to 1930. Oh, wow. I knew that would not have been as old as some of the other things because of the painted metal handles on it. Yeah. And this, we'll just say, is a chopper. Right. And if it were sharp, I guess it would be good for meat, vegetables, right. or whatever it needed to be used for. This is a coffee mill or coffee grinder. Oh, nice. Um, and yes, it's got, it's got a little drawer. Put the coffee in there and turn the handle, and the coffee came out here. And... Uh, so they could drawer. just as way a lot of people like to grind their coffee sure. fresh today. I guess several of them like to grind their coffee fresh. And then we got a little that's, scooper back yes, there. Yes, that's just a little uh, strainer, metal strainer. And what is those tongs? Um, is that for a salad or something? It doesn't, uh, I don't know. They're pretty heavy. They don't go together. Oh, they don't completely. Go all the way, right. So I'm huh. sure they had a special use, but uh, someone donated them without telling Maybe. us what that special use was. Huh. I wonder if that was something like picking up a hot log or it, it, it something been. small for in the. What do you call yes, it? it may not have had anything to do with cooking at all. Right. All right. So let me see this peeler over here. Well, That's pretty uh, neat. We, we can see that it's an apple peeler. The, uh, apple would have gone on that, and then you, this was turned, and I imagine there was a blade or something down there. I'm not quite sure. This I think this would have been pushed farther back that way. I see. Um, <laughs> 1930s and 1940s. And I see a rolling pin. They're just a large, well-used. Ooh, that looks heavy. Rolling pin. It is very heavy. What's that in the back corner over there? See that? It's a, I think that's just um, a masher. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we've got some more pottery or some stoneware. Uh, yes, this is a salt glaze pitcher that uh, the Moore family donated. It belonged to Harriet Gash Moore, who was the wife of William Patton Moore, that we know was a captain in the Civil War. And we have his saddle and more about him upstairs. Okay. Yes, I'm interested in doing an interview about that saddle. I would love to hear more about that. Well, you'll have to get someone that knows quite a bit about him because he was an interesting character. A nutcracker. Um. <laughs> it's like a little mini vice grip. <laughs> Right, I'm sure there might have been, most people probably used a rock. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, uh, what's on the wall here? Oh, another uh, sausage grinder, meat grinder. 
and most of the time these went on the edge of your table. So you put the meat put in, in and then this on top ma to push it, it down, push without it getting your fingers in there mm -hmm. and then grind it. With and it, it would have probably been on the edge of the table and used during right. hog killing time when they were making sausage. Awesome. Um, there's some more candle holders back here on the yes, wall. Yes, candles. With actual candles in it. Mm -hmm. What are the things to the left of that? More candlesticks? Well, these are more candlesticks. Uh, Is that like a mold to make it? I think this was a mold where you poured the hot wax in there. Oh, yep. It, it Flip it upside down. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's awesome. What's the uh, age on that? The date or year? Well, Circa 18... 1860, it says for the candles. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't have anything. Nothing for the mold. No. Very cool. Oh, this is... Oh, you can't see the wash tub. Um, but uh, there it is. <laughs> okay. Used for clothes, kids for a bath. But it's so little. The thing that leaning against the wall would have been used, turned it upside down, and uh, for like laundry paddle to laundry paddle, yes. to clean the laundry. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Oh, that's cute. If you'll notice, here in the corner is, well, the top three tiers of our 50th anniversary cake from last spring. The castle turned 50. Now, this coming spring, the actual museum will turn 50 years old. And we want you to stay tuned because we're going to be having a lot of fun um, for that celebration. I don't want to give everything away, but there might be people going to jail. And there may be other games that are being played. We're going to have a little fundraiser and stuff going on. So stay tuned for that. I do want to let you know, those of you who are expecting to see Jerry Wood today, uh, he had to reschedule it. We will certainly get Mr. Wood back in here uh, as soon as possible. Um, stay tuned for the last week of October. We're going to have the Penland grandchildren. They're going to be talking to us about the first telephone in Clay County. And uh, from what I understand, we're even going to get a demonstration of how it works. So that's going to be exciting. Um, I think we're going to see if we can get Miss Molly, our museum docent, to do the other half of our textile room. So that'll be coming up. Um, again, if there is anyone that you know that has information about any of our exhibits here in the Old Joe Museum, I would love to have them in here and interview them and, and you know pick their brains and get all the knowledge that they have over some of our exhibits. Um, please, if you haven't visited our website yet, please do so at Clay History Art nc.org and then you can click on the corresponding tab to find out about us or find out about donating or volunteering uh, all of our social media interviews that we've done our, our video series um, we are also on facebook x formerly known as twitter instagram and we have a youtube channel and ask that you would actually go and subscribe to those channels for us because that would be easier for us to get our word out to the multitudes and uh, if you are interested in, in talking to me at all about any of these interviews or you want to forward me some information about someone that knows uh, something about our exhibits, you can email me at cchachayesville at outlook.com. So I want to thank you so much for coming to Joe with us today, and we'll see you at the next one.